I did in a wrong way. But it came out right. That's a very funny thing that happens to me. I did <clears throat> start doing, just <clears throat> lending money to the poor people. And anybody would say, that's the wrong thing to do. And I jumped into it out of the situation of the frustrations that you go through in a country like Bangladesh. Nothing happening. You dream about things, never materialize. It gets worse every day. So you jump at anything that you can do. And you don't look for things to learn. You just jump it because it needs to be done. That's how it happened. And I also do things which I know nothing about. And finally it works out. And one of the best things when people say, how did you do the micro credit? I said, one of the best things that happened, I didn't know anything about banking. If I knew banking, no way I would do something like this. <laughs> so not knowing something is maybe a blessing sometimes. You are open. You can do things in your way without worrying about the rules or the procedures and so on and so forth. They tell me, how did you do those kind of rules, procedures for Grameen Bank? I said, that was simple. I didn't know anything about banking. So every time I needed a rule or a procedure, how to do that, I have to look back. What do the conventional banks do? And I look at very carefully how they do it. Once I learn how they do it, I just do the opposite. <laughs> and it worked out. So that's what the microcredit is all about. Conventional banks go to the rich, we go to the poor. Conventional banks go to men, particularly in Bangladesh, 99% of the borrowers are men. I went to women. 97% of our borrowers are women. We have eight and a half million borrowers. And you can imagine it's a bank for the women. And conventional banks are owned by rich people. Grameen Bank is owned by poor people, the borrowers. They own the bank. Poor women, they own the bank. So everything you see, conventional banks need collateral. Without collateral, they're not going to talk to you. So we said, forget it. Poor people don't have collateral. Why well, you ask for that? So we dismissed the whole idea of collateral. Everybody was shocked. How can you do banking like that? I said, let's try. I could try because I didn't know anything. I tried and it worked. We have no collateral. We lend out billions of dollars. No collateral. Since we don't have collateral, we don't have lawyers. <laughs> this is the only lawyer-free bank in the whole world. So don't, don't get scared if you don't know something. Don't feel that you have to be very smart to do something. Stupid people like us do things, it works out. <laughs> so that's the fun part of it. Don't feel scared about challenging things. Conventional bankers are always telling me, we, don't lend, we can't lend money to the poor people. You know why? Because they're not credit worthy. I have heard it millions of times telling me that they are not credit worthy. I wondered, should the banks tell people whether they are credit worthy or not? Or that sh people should be telling the banks whether they are people worthy or not? You reverse, you reverse the whole question. Then you get it. So doing the opposite way, doing the stupid way, is not a bad thing. Today, microcredit is everywhere, all over the world, including in this country, in the United States. We run bank in uh, New York City, five branches, 10,000 borrowers in the last four years. Repayment, 99.3%. Average loan, $1,500. Works beautifully for women, all 10,000 borrowers that we have, all are women. And the same city which flourishes 
with the payday lenders, a flourishing business. Interest rate, 